Hi guys, welcome to this page of the notes and I apologize, I forgot one of my uh, objectives or learning targets where I said we would plot medians and find centroids on a coordinate plane. So we will talk about altitudes and orthocenter, but first I wanna cover this objective with you. So let's try a couple more example problems here dealing with medians and the centroid. Let's start with this one. What I've done is I've given you the triangle ABC, A, B, C, and I've told you that AD is a perpendicular bisector of BC, which you can certainly tell right from the diagram. AD, right, is a line. We know it's perpendicular because I give you the 90 degree symbol, and we know it's a bisector because I tell you CD is congruent to DB, so perpendicular bisector. I wouldn't have even had to have told you that up here in the information. You could have got it right from the diagram, or you should be able to get that from the diagram, but there it is. If AD, if the entire length AD is 21 feet, 21 feet, I want you to find position of the centroid. Find the centroid. Well, here's what I know. I know that AD is a median. AD is a median. How do I know that? How do I know that AD is a median? Well, remember, a median extends from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. AD starts at the vertex, A, and extends to the midpoint of the opposite side. I know it's a midpoint because it splits this side into two congruent segments. So I know AD is a midpoint, or uh, I know that AD is a median. Since I know it's a median, I know the ratio, and here's what that ratio is. Remember from the previous page where we talked about the centroid theorem, I know, uh, I call it point, what do I, where do I put? Uh, the centroid, the position of the centroid, let's call it P. Uh, I don't know, let's say it's probably going to be somewhere right around there. So I know that A, P, the distance from the vertex to the centroid, A, P, is two-thirds the entire length of the median, which is A, D. Well, at this point, guys, it's, it's plug and chug. Don't fat finger something on your calculator. I know that AD is 21 feet. So it'll be two thirds, 21 feet. Again, feel free to use a calculator. Don't fat finger something on your calculator. And you wind up with AP being 14 units. AP is 14 units. Now, the distance, I didn't ask you for it, but let's do it anyway, because it's a really good exercise. If AP, the distance from A to the centroid, is 14 units, what is the distance from the centroid to D? Well, you could do it a couple of ways. You could either set up that um, you know that PD is one-third the entire distance, or you could use the segment addition postulate. You know the entire thing is 21. You know the distance from A to P is 14, so 21 minus 14, of course, will be 7. Either way you do it, you get that PD is equal to 7. Now, I ask you, right, describe the position. You have two ways to do it. You could either say centroid is 14 units below vertex A, or, right, because that was the distance from A to the centroid, it was 14 units. So the centroid is 14 units below vertex A. Start at A, go 14 units down, you got the centroid. Or we, we could go the other way, right? I know that the centroid is seven, seven units above the midpoint D. Either way, they both tell you the exact same thing. They both give you the position, either 14 units below the vertex A or go seven units up from the midpoint D. Either way, you find the centroid of the triangle. Hey, let's graph. Here's what I've done. I have given you a triangle on a coordinate plane. 
I want you to find the centroid. That means I need to draw at least, remember, the centroid comes from three medians, three medians. But we saw this before when we were doing the circumcenter. You actually, as long as you draw them correctly, you really only need two. As long as you can find two of them, their point of intersection will be also where the third one intersects. So that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and draw two of these. Um, and as long as we do it right, two is enough to find that centroid. Remember, the centroid comes from medians. So a line that extends from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. Well, here's the deal. When we were doing the um, circumcenter, I drew triangles where you could simply count. Ooh. I gave you a little bit trickier one here. Now, when we were talking about the circumcenter, I did mention that if I gave you problems that were a little bit trickier and you weren't able to count, you just simply have to use the midpoint formula to find that center point. Here it is, right? I can't, none of these lines are horizontal or vertical, meaning I can't just simply count, divide that number by two and know what my midpoint is. So since all of my lines are on a diagonal, I don't have a choice. You must do the midpoint formula to find the midpoint of each of those lines. Again, I'm only gonna do two of them, but it still serves that a midpoint would get you the midpoint of each of them. So here we go. Let's do a couple of these. We'll call this one A, there's A, we'll call this one B, there's B, and we'll call this one C, there's C. Okay, now, what are each of these points? Well, A, again, you can just count, it is at the point zero, A. B, again, counting is going to be at six, four, and C is clearly at three, zero. All right, here we go. Um, again, I really only need to do two of them. So what we're gonna do is uh, let's start by finding the midpoint between A and B. Find the midpoint between A and B. Again, remember the midpoint formula is simply this, x1 plus x2 divided by two, y1 plus y2 divided by two. That's gonna get me an ordered pair. Well, we were gonna do A, B. So I have zero, eight, and I have the point six, four. We'll call x1, y1, x2, y2. Let me fix my one because it's hard to tell what that is. Again, it's plug and chug. Plug and chug, don't fat finger something on your calculator and this should be fairly straightforward and easy. x1, zero, plus six, zero, plus six, that'll be divided by two. y1, eight, plus four, divide by two. What do we get? Zero plus six is six, six divided by two is three. Eight plus four is 12, 12 divided by two is six. So I have a midpoint at three, six. Let's find that guy. Um, let me do it in green. So three, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, Okay, right there is the midpoint of A, B. Now, I need to draw a median, which means my line extends from the vertex to the opposite line, the median of the opposite line. So from C to that middle point. Turns out it's that vertical line right there. Awesome, so there's my first median. Now I need another one. Let's go ahead and find the midpoint between A and C. All right, so point A is at 0, 8. That's A. Point C is at 3, 0. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And we do it again. X1 plus X2 over 2 y1 plus y2 over 2. Plug and chug, don't fat finger something. And we got it. So it's going to be 0 plus 3 divided by 2. It's going to be 8 plus 0 
divided by two. Well, three divided by two, it doesn't divide evenly, but since we're graphing, decimals are absolutely gonna be the way to go. This would be three halves, but three halves as a decimal is 1.5, so 1.5. And then eight divided by two, of course, is four. So the midpoint of a C is 1.5 and four. 1.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Right there is that midpoint. It's at 1.5, 1 1.5, up 4. Now I need to draw the median from that midpoint to the vertice opposite it. Right there. And look at that, just like that, boom, right there in red. Again, where those medians intersect will be your centroid, which for us is at one, two, that x equals three, y equals four. So my centroid is at three, four, which is what I asked you to find. I gave you guys another one right here. Please feel free to go ahead and try this one on your own. Come back, check and see if you get what I get. I'll run through it here with you real quick uh, just to make sure that we all have the exact same answer. So here we go. There's, um, yeah, let's make that A, which is at negative one, seven, B. Uh, that'll be point B. Um, B is gonna be at nine, five, and this will be point C. Point C is at four, three. Again, all I'm doing right to find those points, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, right? I'm just finding their point on the coordinate plane. Okay, again, none of these lines are horizontal or vertical, meaning I can't just count and then divide by two. Since they're all diagonal lines, you, you have to do the midpoint formula. You don't have a choice. It's gotta be the midpoint formula. So let's go ahead and find the midpoint of A and B. So the midpoint of AB midpoint of AB is going to be um, again, I don't know, right? Negative one plus nine divide by two. To find the y value, seven plus five divide by two. Eight, right? Negative one plus nine, that's gonna be eight. Eight divided by two is four. Um, seven plus five is gonna be 12. 12 divided by two is six. So I'm gonna be at four, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Puts me right there. That's the midpoint between A and B. The median is from the midpoint to the vertice opposite from it. So right there, there is that median. All right, I need another one. Let's do the midpoint between, um, I don't know, AC. Let's do the midpoint AC. Okay, here we go. Uh, a, negative one and four. So minus one plus four divided by two. Then the y's, seven plus three divided by two. Well, what do we get? Negative one plus four, that's gonna be three. Once again, I get three halves as a decimal 1.5. Of course, on a coordinate plane, decimals are way easier to graph than fractions, so that's why I'll go with 1.5. Seven plus three is 10, 10 divided by two is five. So I go to 1.5 and then five. 1.5, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there, 1.55. My median is from that point to the vertice that is opposite from it. And I want the point of intersection of those two medians. So there is my centroid, which means that my centroid is at the point 
Let's find it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, four, five. So, uh, again, it would be nice and easy if your triangle has vertical and horizontal lines, you can just count, divide by two, and you've got the midpoint. <laughs> if I don't give you a triangle where you have horizontal and vertical lines, you'll have to do the midpoint formula, but again, even that is not too terribly tricky to find those midpoints and then just draw a line from that midpoint to the vertices. All right, so that's how we find the centroid, as well as use the centroid theorem to solve problems. Now, on the next page of the notes, we'll take a look at the altitudes of triangles and how we can use the altitudes to find the orthocenter. I'll meet you guys on the next page.